How's it going, ladies and bruises? I'm Bobby Six, and welcome back to the Zodiac Trial. We'll, you'll remember if we watched the last episode, uh, we failed when we were trying to deduce who the real killer was. Monkey's trying to convince us that it was Dog. Uh, Dog did kill us, but he obviously didn't intend to. It was an accident. He just tr was trying not to be killed. Because we picked the wrong one here. I think we picked... What did we pick here? We picked Horse. No, we picked Bunny. So we need to figure out who killed each of the people to get ahead. So this is going to take some trial and error, I think, because... Like the first one, most of them have alibis. Most of them were with others. Tiger and Bunny were together. Ox and Rooster were together. Dragon and Snake were together. Horse and Sheep were together. I don't think that they have an alibi. But the first one was a shot as well, so it's unlikely that a Horse shot anyone. Horse is a hulking motherfucker. He could just physically destroy someone, he wouldn't even need a weapon. You know? So I don't know. I don't know. Let's pick sheep. Sheep kill pig, that's the answer. Sheep? Yeah, sheep, it's the only thing that makes sense. Hype matches, modus operandi matches. Most importantly, she doesn't have an alibi for when pig was shot. In fact, we have explicit confirmation that she wasn't around when Pig was killed. She went and killed Pig, I don't know why, perhaps she was the other traitor. But if she was the only other traitor mouse, how did she end up dead? I'm getting to that. The mistake here is thinking that this is an act of one individual. Rather, this is a sequence of isolated events. Next comes who killed Sheep. Knowing what we know, I think the only likely suspect would be Tiger. Perhaps she figured out that Sheep killed Pig, although I have no idea. But judging by Sheep's cause of death and comfort information on the other suspects, it has to be Tiger who enters the library and kills Sheep. She thinks Sheep is still alone, but Horse is actually searching the same area as Sheep, just in the library's other room. When he returns he sees the scene. He's enraged. A brawl with Tiger ensues. Horse winds up the victor. Of course, Horse kills Tiger. It's the only thing that makes sense. But when Horse checks Tiger's tablet, he discovers that she's not the traitor. Maybe he fears that what will happen if he admits to killing someone who wasn't a traitor. Maybe that's why he quickly comes up with a lie about being hit over the head. I thought that sounded fishy at the time. Would have saved all our asses a whole lot of trouble if he was just up front then, but whatever. I don't know exactly what was going through his head, and I never will. Whatever the motive, he doesn't fess up to his kill, so Bunny and Horse are left to their own devices. Now Bunny, he's awfully suspicious of Horse, continues to investigate, and there he finds the silenced pistol, which Sheep somehow had a to begin, I had to begin with on her body. What happens next, judging by the fact that Horse was shot in the back of the head, maybe went something like this. Perhaps Bunny asked to check Horse's head to examine the supposed wound. When he looked at it, he saw no injury. His suspicions of Horse being the traitor were confirmed. He knew that if Horse was the traitor, the best chance he'd get, it's the best chance he'd get, so right then and there he fired. Upstairs, I had just informed Ox and Rooster about the mysterious deaths going around, and for one of those two men, this is an opportunity. I don't know why Rooster had the desire to kill Ox, but I'm guessing it's for reasons unrelated to the game. I was a personal, it was a personally motivated kill. It happened much as Snake deduced, a quick slash to the neck from behind. Rooster decided to use the chaos to his advantage and pin the kill on the other murderer. Unfortunately, Snake would later see through this ruse, and when Rooster tried to get away, Snake wouldn't hesitate to punish the guilty party. Meanwhile, Dragon walks in on the scene with Bunny. Bunny tries to placate Dragon to show Horse's tablet, proving that he was the traitor. That Bunny was on the, in the right, and Horse's tablet proves otherwise. This comes as a shock to both Dragon and Bunny. Bunny realizes Dragon's ill intent, perhaps killing intent, right away. Maybe he tried to pull a gun on Dragon to placate her, to buy her for time, for him to explain. Whatever the motivation, it results in a misunderstanding, and Dragon ends things right there and then. I see, I see. That all makes sense. Well reasoned as usual, Mouse. But I must ask, what about Dragon and Snake's deaths? Surely those were caused by a major trinket, no? No, I don't think they were. After all, if I'm right, Dog had no part in these proceedings. He had no reason to target the two. I think what actually happened might have been a lot more petty and tragic than that. Both their tablets were by their bodies, right? I think their fight might have evolved. One of them snatched and tried to operate the other's tablet to execute him. Maybe Snake thought similar to me and suspected Dragon as the traitor after his story. The executed one in their dying throes lunged back and operated the first person's tablet, causing them to be executed. A battle of mutual destruction. 
Indeed it is possible. So then is dog not an enemy to be feared? I don't think so. But there's only one thing that doesn't sit right with me. Oh? What doesn't feel right? <laughs> Good question. Let's save again. That was the right answer though. Um, well, the only one that doesn't feel right was Bunny and Snake, uh, Dragon and Snake's death, right? If Snake and Dragon died like I said, there's no way you could have been ignorant of it, right? Mouse? I mean, I know you said you were focused on your meditation, but a conflict like that surely had to draw your attention. I just don't buy that you would calmly ignore when a dying person lunged at another with an intent to kill them when they were mere feet from you. I'm sorry, Mouth. Mouse, those deaths truly fall out under my responsibility. However, it is sad to say, but I'm completely missed the scene you described. Now you didn't miss it. You said you heard them both cry out in pain, and that's when you looked at them. But that can't be what happened. Maybe I was confused. A lot's happened, you know. And it was awfully graphic. You know how unreliable memories get under times of stress. That's not the only thing I noticed, monkey. A cold shiver went up my spine. Something in the back of my head was shouting at me to stop. To not push any further. What did it matter at this point? Learning the truth wouldn't help me at all. Let lying dogs rest. But I was just too curious. Sheep went from pig's murder to the library. She should have passed by the cafeteria. You should have seen her. Mouse, that's not proof of anything. She probably deliberately took a route to avoid the cafeteria so I wouldn't spot her. Maybe. But that's not what's weird to me. What's weird is that Horse said that she claimed to be going to let you free from your restraints again. That implies she also let you free from your restraints to input a move round the round before. So did I. And I came right at the end of the round. Which means when I helped you out, she must have already come to let you input your move. So Monkey, why didn't you tell me that you'd already input your move? That's... And there's something even more telling to me. When Horse said she let to, left to free you from your restraints, Bunny didn't even bat an eye. Not a single question of clarification. Almost as though he knew what Horse was referring to. Almost as though he realised that Sheep was doing what he did and stayed silent, just like I did. And that's not all. Snake's alibi of Dragon was oddly caveated. He made sure the shot happened on the fifth round, not the fourth, and that the murder happened on the first floor. Using reverse logic on the statement, that means if the murder happened in the fourth round, or it had happened on the second or third floor, Snake couldn't provide an airtight alibi. Now why would this be the case? Perhaps did Dragon come down to help you from your restraints in the fourth round? And Snake helped you from those restraints in the fifth round? Mouse, what are you implying? My explanation of the murders is right, I think, but it doesn't account for why people have been acting weird. But there might be one common denominator. You're hefting some pretty weighty allegations there, Mouse, but I don't suppose you have any proof of what you're saying. I'm sorry, monkey, but I don't, and it comes in the advice you just gave me. The chaos and darkness of this race will erase what happens here. The truth will be written by the survivors. The moment I heard that line, I thought I recognised it, and then I remembered. When Dragon was justifying murdering Bunny, she said, After all, the chaos and darkness of this race will tear away all this shit. Our survivors will write the truth. And when I confronted Snake about his murder, he said, This can all be erased by the chaos and darkness. A truth can be written by us survivors. That's not a coincidence, Monkey. Don't try to say it is. Monkey, what did you do? I was the one who made Brian the way he is. What? The wild shift in tone threw me for a complete loop. Still, I wanted to hear what she was saying. Well, that's not quite right. He was already heading down this path, but I... I... I didn't stop him. Not when I could have... Not when I could have, at any rate. In fact, it's possible I... Encouraged him? What? When he talked about all these conspiracy theories about his father, his father really was really innocent. It was fascinating to me. These weren't the standard crackpot nonsense. They're really well thought out. At times, I couldn't help but wonder where he was getting all this information from. And I, I indulged him. I heard him out. I was well aware that it was wrong. It was wrong to enable him like this. But I was just curious. So curious, so, so curious to hear what he had to say. It was just such a fascinating case. So I encouraged him on the subject. I treated his assumptions as correct and talked, them, talked through them to see where it went. 
So instead of stopping his delusions, I enabled them. Until... Until it was too late. Toward the end, I finally realized that I'd gone too far. That he had gone too far. That he was no longer simply in denial. That he was actively putting belief in fantasies. That he val his value system was corrupted. I tried to backtrack. To stop it. To snap him into reality, but... That final meeting? The last one he showed up to? I really fucked it up. Monkey, what does this have to do with anything? When I sat there, tied up, facing down death, the void of nothingness felt so... overwhelming. So overpowering. So distract myself, I started thinking of other things. Of past meetings. Of Brian's theories. And I started thinking to myself, what if he was right? What if these people did deserve to be here? My curiosity started eating at me again. Was she really that naive? Was Tiger really that unstable? Was Dragon really that hateful? Was Snake really that cold hearted? Mouse, you can't understand just how easy it was to push these people off the brink. I wasn't being some master manipulator, I was giving the lightest taps on the back and they fell so, so, so easily. It was incredible. <laughs> it's funny. I'm the one who always preached about keeping your mental health in check, but in the face of my impending inevitable death, I think I was the one who went a little bit crazy. <laughs> I looked at this pathetic, chuckling lady with pure disgust and horror. This couldn't be the person I knew. This couldn't be my therapist. This couldn't be Jay Hansen. This was a demon. Someone who drove a group of people to murder from the comfort of a chair. And for what? Curiosity? Was she serious? It was appalling. It was more crushing than anything else that had happened. I trusted you. You did. You've always had a tendency towards codependency, Mouse. Make sure to note that to your next therapist. You're horrible. I don't even know you. You don't know me. Please, treat the me you see before me as some pathetic stranger. I don't want to remem be remembered by you for this awful person this chair has made me. This accursed, horrifying, mind-tainting chair. It's rotten. Rotten. I just stared at her as she squirmed. It looked like she was trying to get free, but she was tied up tight. I didn't know what to say. I'm going to get Dog, and we're going to escape together. You do that. I started to walk away, but before I could leave, Monkey chimed up once more. Mouse? What? Before I finally, truly meet my maker, if I'm confessing everything, there's something else I think you should know. About Brian? No. I wasn't in the mood, but God damn it, I just could not ask her to go on. What is it? Go get Dog first. I think you'd be interested to hear about this as well. Fine. And like that, I left Monkey and began to search through the school. More for Dog. It took a while, but eventually I found him lying on a couch in some student commons area on the third floor. Dog? What the hell are you doing? Oh, a mouse. Uh, definitely not napping, that's for sure. You're telling me that all this shit has been going down and you've been here napping? Mouse, so I literally just said I definitely wasn't napping. Didn't you hear me? I can't believe this. We're in a death game. You have to input an action every round. What if you slept through a round in and got executed? Well, first of all, that would be really funny. And second, it's not like I've been sleeping. Just resting. And we're supposed to meet again in two rounds at the cafeteria. So, full disclosure, I totally forgot about that until you just said that two seconds ago. I couldn't even think of any other words. He was the only other person getting out of this alive. I could hear the gods laughing. I imagine I'm in for an earful from Ox when I get back down there. I wish. Oh, I fit him on on everything that had happened. He took it better than one would expect, which I couldn't even call surprising at this point. That's pretty fucking rough, huh? Yeah, you're telling me. You know, I think I want to have a little chat with Monkey now. So do I. Plus, she has something important to tell us. Something important? Goody. And like that, the two of us made our way down to the cafeteria. There, for the final time, I was to meet with that sh with a shocking sight. Where I expected to find Monkey to be tied up, I was met with an empty chair and jump ropes on the floor. Are you serious? Are you fucking serious? I can't leave anywhere for a moment with a minute without everything exploding. That's, uh, yeah, wow. Alright, so a total psycho has escaped. What's our plan now? Is she? What do you mean? The ropes are off. She's clearly got out of them. But look at this. Dog walked over to them and picked them up. 
These were cut. Deliberately. Okay, well, I guess she had a bladed instrument on her. Mouse, you know that much doesn't make sense, right? Between the traitor announcements and Monkey being tied up, she was under constant surveillance the whole time. She never had time to grab a knife. So fine, she got it beforehand. But before the traitor announcements, is there any reason why Monkey would grab a knife? Or alternatively, is there any reason that she would just have a knife on her person beforehand? Even if she's a complete nutcase, as you described her as, that just doesn't add up. Well, she must have cut the rope somehow. Must she have? So you're not seriously going to suggest that someone else helped her escape, are you? No, but I'm going to suggest that someone else cut those ropes. Who? Who could have done that? Because I left her tied up. You were supposedly napping on the third floor and everyone else is dead. Pig was shot through the chest. Chief had her neck snapped. Tiger bled to death. Ox's throat was slit with a knife. Horse was shot point blank in the back of the head. Bunnies was beaten and strangled to death. Rooster was stabbed again to death. And Dragon and Snake both e were both executed by the collars. So there's nobody who should have been able to free her. Hey, I'm not the here to give you an answer. I'm just saying, it seems to me like there has to be a third party involved. And it seems to me like they wanted to make it look like Monkey escaped on her own. I didn't know what to say to that. We were left with an unsolvable mystery in the wake of Monkey's disappearance. All that was left to do was to gather everybody's tablets and minor trinkets and finish the race. The whole time I was on edge, expecting to fi a final surprise, an attack from the escaped trader. Once she missed a round, she would die. But in the end, nothing came of it. It was a peaceful finish. No, not peaceful. Silent. In the end, Dog and I ended the game alive. Ox, Tiger, Bunny, Dragon, Snake, Horse, Sheep, Rooster and Pig ended it dead. And Monkey ended it missing. Ten of Spades. A truly nasty path for Mouths to walk. Unrelenting, brutal and shocking. More to the point, there are too many key sacrifices with this line of play. Not to mention, it's all a bit much, no? On the whole, there's not much potential with this trade appearing. No. Well, alright, what do we do now then? Right and wrong. If we pick right here, that's going to give us the same ending basically as picking the wrong thing when we're deducing it, right? Skip. Of course. I had to be strong. I had to survive. Okay then. It's simple self-defense. He's killed nine people. Yeah, it's the same. Okay. How much further back can I go? Oh, here we go. When she said, you can trust me. And I said, I can. But now we can say, can I? I hesitated for a second. I don't know if that's the case anymore, monkey. What? I mean, you're great and all, but, you know, you're a traitor. I'm glad you added yourself, but... I didn't know what to say. I felt shameful to let my dark suspicions out in the open like that. But I couldn't lie to Monkey. Monkey, for her part, sighed. Oh, Mouse, I understand your thoughts. But at the very least, I thought you would see I bear the group no harm. And with that last awkward input, I left our conversation, making my way back to the room, pig occupied. And... It's all skipping? Monkey's good. She's good. Thank God for that, you know. She's given up her life for this. The least we could do is treat her, right? It's really considerate, Mouse. Well, you know... This is all the same. I couldn't get a coherent thought out. I just fell to the side. What? A bullet had burst through the door and struck me right in the stomach. We got shot instead of Pig. I could feel blood pouring out of my body in massive quantities. I could see Pig beginning to freak out with no idea how to respond. Oh... This is how I die, isn't it? I wish that was a peaceful revelation. But it's the one that fills you with panic. You start thinking of all the things that you wish you could have done, that you wanted to do, had you not died. You might have swarmed with unfulfilled desires and unsaid thoughts, and then that miasma of regret eventually stops. But that's not a good thing, because it only stops when you're fully dead. Ten of clubs. A butterfly effect might put mouse in the bullet's path. There isn't much to be done to stop the killer before they strike. But perhaps the target can be redirected, brutal, to pig instead, yeah, lovely. Alright, where are we going back to then? Oh, we'll go back to this one. When we're going to choose uh, who's going to free Monkey, so she can input her thing. We did it ourselves, we'll let her do it. Letting her go off like this technically broke the pairs rule we established, however, for something this mundane, it shouldn't really be a problem. Suit yourself. And just like that, Pig ran down to the cafeteria. 
Oh, she was gone. I took out my tablet and pressed the run button. And then I waited. After some time, Pig returned. Hey, how'd it go? Uh, it went good. Good, I think. You think? Yeah, it was good. I mean, I went and did the thing that I intended I to do, and I did it, so yeah, it went well. Okay then, good to hear we didn't accidentally get monkey executed. Time to keep searching, yeah? Let's. Are we gonna get shot again? And like that, we headed out to check some other classrooms. We searched for a while, but we didn't find much use. Eventually, we just searched in silence, beginning to feel awkward. I tried for some small talk. So, lots of books around here. Uh, it's an English classroom, so that tracks. Right, right. You big reader pig? I used to be. I've kind of fallen off of that for the last couple of years. I can feel that. I think part of growing up is no longer having time to read books. That's a sad way of thinking. Yeah, it is. You know, even with my busy schedule, I bet I could put enough time in my life to read books. At least once a month. You know, I probably could too. And it would be good to read more often. It would, wouldn't it? I enjoy reading a book whenever I get around to it. Same. And I know that reading is a much better hobby than just watching TV or whatever. I've read a study like that. So it'd be totally possible to make me make time... For me to make time to read more often. It'd be good for me. And I'd enjoy it. Absolutely. It's a shame that there's absolutely no chance I'll go through with that idea, huh? Not a chance in hell. Not even when I had this exact same thought process a few in a few, in a few months. No, I'll forget about it in the exact same way. But I'll be able to consistently make the time to binge trash shows on the weekend. Shows that I won't really like all that much. Right. Right. But I'd imagine you still read some amount, being a journalist. Oh well, that's a different type of reading. A lot sadder type of reading. I'd imagine. Seems depressing to be a journalist. Well, there's a lot more bad news than good. You get used to it though. Well, that's, uh, good? Not really. You just go through so many horrible, horrible stories. Right, right. Whenever I hear about any of those things, I just feel so bad for everybody involved. Yeah, well, not everybody. Hmm? I mean, usually there's an arsehole to blame for it all. Yeah, but I mean, it's really in a good, a good situation for them, too. You have to wonder what's fucked them so badly to get to that point in life. Just because they were fucked up in life doesn't mean they had a piece of shit for it. I never said that. I was just pointing out that I feel bad for everyone. Okay, but why are you feeling bad for the perpetrators? I mean, I don't feel bad for them in particular. You don't feel rage at them? Not really, I mean, it's not like I know them. Rage at what made me the way they are, perhaps. Made them the way they are, perhaps. Yeah, see, just if they were made they are because of some underlying system, doesn't mean they aren't a piece of shit. Again, I know that, I'm just saying that what's really fucked up is what keeps producing the monsters in our society. I mean, if not for those systems, why would they keep showing up? Uh, because evil people will always show up? That's... I think I'm not explaining myself well here. Okay, so when you're writing a hit piece on someone, what's your goal? Do you intend to tear down that one individual person? Or do you use it as an opportunity to shed light on some larger issue at play? Huh, I don't know. Never really considered that. You haven't? Don't really have time to, it's a pretty fast-paced world. Besides, in the end, it all boils down to the same thing, doesn't it? Take down the villain. I guess. A moment of awkward silence passes between us. After a pause, Pig spoke back up, seeming a bit defensive. I mean, I get your perspective, though. After all, you're a defense attorney, right? I plan to be one. Right, right. You know, you're usually going to be defending guilty people, right? Tends to be the case. You usually don't take things to court, either. Just look out for your client. Right, you try to make the prosecutor doubt their case enough to let your client have as a light a punishment as possible. That's the way I'm looking at it. I get viewing it from the criminal's perspective. But what about the victim? Or the relatives of the victim? Them getting justice is a huge thing to give them peace. I mean, sometimes. Although actually, studies have shown that justice against crim the criminal actually ultimately doesn't tend to give those affected by the crime much peace. But that's not always the case. I mean, look at the situation we're in. We returned to searching in silence. Before long, we had finished our search. Well, the round's almost over. I should probably let Monkey use the tablet again. You go do that. I'll input on my tablet and then give the room here another once over. Till you come back. Okay. And like that, Pig once again left the room. This is going pretty differently this time. I pulled out my tablet again and chose to run. Then I looked around, waiting for Pig to return. It didn't take you long. Where next? Well... Actually, why don't we go back and check on the classroom I woke up in? I wasn't on the lookout back then, so it's possible I missed some stuff there. Alright, lead the way. 
And just like that, I took it to the classroom I woke up in. Ah, memories. <laughs> memories. It was only hours ago, but it felt like a lifetime ago. I was so naive back then. <laughs> Two hours ago. <laughs> just a child, ignorant of the ways of the world. True, there was some fear in me. But more so, I was filled with wonder. Could it be? Back then, we... Mouse, are you okay? We've been staring at nothing for a bit now. We're just nostalgic for a couple of hours ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's begin looking around. We gave the laboratory one thorough sweep. Man, this must be a pretty good skill. There are a ton of chemicals here, really. This stuff is top of the line. Yeah, this place is nice. Before long, we found a safe hidden in one of the cabinets. Alright, this is something. Yeah, now we just need to find the passcode to it. Well, there's only one place in this room that has a lot of numbers in it. The whiteboard still has a lot of equations on it. That probably means something. Maybe. I always sucked at chemistry, so I can't really make heads or tails of it. Leave it to me, then. I actually thought about being a chemist back in high school. Oh, I was great at it. Really? Then by all means, go ahead. Like that, Pig got to work, giving the whiteboard a thorough analysis. Meanwhile, my eyes were drawn to some odd graffiti written on one of the desks. C-R-C-R-R-E. By the looks of it, it hadn't been here for long. And the odd capitalized R. We were in a chemistry classroom, it didn't take long for me to connect the dots. I found a periodic table and checked. Then I went over to the safe and input 2475. As expected, it opened. Hey, you got it open? Yep. I reached in and grabbed a token with the inscription Pig Minor Trinket written on it. Seems like we scored the jackpot. How'd you get that open? Uh, I'm awesome. It doesn't answer my question. How does it not? You know, forget it. How many trinkets do we have in total right now? Let's pile them together. I did as she asked and put all the trinkets I had on the table. There were a total of two. Not great. Alright, alright. Good to know. I'll hold on to these for now. Keep them in one place. Alright. Like that, Pig put the trinkets in her pocket. The round's getting close to ending, right? You're right. Let's input our actions and then go back down to the cafeteria to make it back up with everyone. I thought things were settled, but just then Pig spoke up. Hey Mouse. Yeah? Your actions should move you the same number of spaces as if you just chose to run normally, right? Uh, presumably if I hit to ride on someone who just moves one space, yeah. Is that really true? Huh? Don't you want to test it out just to make sure? I mean it'd be nice to. This round, why don't you try hitching a ride on me? That way, we'll get to see for sure if it works that way or not. So, um, hitch a ride to me. She's gonna use the trinkets, bust her head. We're gonna bust her head with her and she's gonna blame us. So, um, hitch a ride to me. That's my advice. Yeah. Dodgy bastard. Without saying another word, Pig exited the room. Presumably to find another room to input her action in. It was certainly an odd exchange. Pig was acting a little weird. So should I take her up on her offer? The idea of testing my ability was a bit tempting. What to do? She's totally going to use those trinkets to run ahead. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Wait, where are we now? I think all of these are pretty much... We can go here. This, this is an old one. So many bits. Run as usual. What was I thinking about? If I randomly decide to use my ability, it would signal to the group that I didn't trust them. Just testing it out, what was I thinking? What was Pig thinking? Without another thought, I chose to run. Now well, time to meet up, again, like promised. I would have preferred to walk with Pig, but she seemed to have gone ahead without me. No problem, I'll just get down by myself. I took a staircase down to the first floor. She totally ran ahead. Ah, oh, Mouse, there you are. Where's Pig? She didn't come ahead by herself already? No. That's odd. Who cares, the results are about to be announced. We all turned our attentions to the TV, where the race results would be shown. There shouldn't be anything out of the ordinary here, though. Round six has ended. Now let us see how the race has progressed. Where's Pig at the bottom? Barely can see, Pig. It's got two trinkets, right? Can she activate both of them? How far would that get her? Ready? The pig used loses desperation. The pig moves 11 spaces. Now round 7 has begun. Do your best and choose wisely. 
What? What the hell? What was Pig doing? The answer was obvious upon a second thought. She was trying to win the race. That meant the person with the desperate personality was the very person I'd just spent that much time with. I kicked myself for not noticing it earlier. Pig had been acting strange. I just didn't think... Well, that's it. I just didn't think. Th this is... Pig betrayed us. It appears our other traitor has shown themselves. Yo, well, this is bad, isn't it? She's way ahead of all of us. Indeed, for the person with the desperate personality to have such a powerful ability, and for Pig to use it so effectively. This is perhaps the rare case where a single agent can effectively gain such an incredible lead. So, uh, are we... Everyone settle down. Ox regained the group's attention. This is not a cause for alarm. Rather, this could be viewed as a good thing. After all, we now know who the enemy is. Admittedly, Pig has gained a rather impressive lead on us. However, that is a move she can only utilize once. At this point, her movement options have been severely limited. We should just focus on capturing her. Say, Snake? You said your ability would be, a, would be good to help prevent if someone went off on their own. Do you think you can turn things around? Alas, I fear things may not be that simple, Mouse. The scenario I pictured was if several people acted out. With a single frontrunner gaining such a lead, I'm regrettably limited in my usefulness. Figures. Hey, this is where my dragon breath could be use, used, yeah? Indeed, dragon. You may come in handy here. After all, Pig has only one option as to how far she can move at this point. They've run what they'll run one space. That's not true. She's got two trinkets. If you dragon breath that lane, we can prevent her from winning. Are we sure that'll work? What if she has items? She doesn't. I've been with her this whole time. She hasn't got any items. Well, I did get hand over the minor trinkets to her. You what? How was I supposed to know? How many minor trinkets does she have? Two. Oh, okay, so if you subtract her and Monkey, we still have enough. Sure, that's nice to know. But the important thing is that all she has are minor trinkets. She can't use more than one herself, so she's still limited to moving one space. Dragon, you use her ability to block off the space in front of her. Sure. As for the rest of us, we need to split up and search for Pig physically. Right. There's one way to stop her that doesn't involve any games. We prevent her from inputting any moves by force. I know this is something none of you will like to hear, but at this point, it's us or her. I think in this situation, we're authorized to use lethal force. Hold on. We're still not 100% sure that Pig is, in fact, the traitor. It could be a misclick or something. If that's the case, why is she hiding out? For a moment, a thought passed through my mind. Is she really hiding right now? Or something else? That's a good point, Mouse. We're not entirely sure at the moment, so if you get the chance, try to ask about her motives. But the number one priority is stopping her by any means necessary. This is a large skill, but it's still just a skill. If we all split up and search carefully, we'll find her soon. This isn't some trinket we're looking for, it's a human being. A lot harder to hide. So we search for her, and reconvene at the end of the round. And like that, everyone understood the mission. Not everyone liked it, but everyone understood it. Might I be untied at this point? It's clear that I bear the group no ill will, and I believe I could be an aid in searching for Pig. Fine, but you're searching with me. It would be my pleasure. I also decided to search with Ox. Alright, we're going to wrap this one up here. It seems like that one <laughs> choice... I thought that was going to be an innocuous choice, to be honest, but it's put the entire game on a completely different path. Which is insane. How many freak... I mean, there is 52 endings, right? One for each card, so... It's probably not that crazy to think that everything's going to split off on its own thing, but wow. Pretty impressive. We'll see how this ends up. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next one.